G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Here's a curious question for middle schoolers. Goes as follows. Pick two consecutive integers whose sum is less than 100. Uh, the scary word there is consecutive. What does that mean? It means uh, next to each other. So, okay, pick two integers next to each other, 39 and 40 or something, whose sum is less than 100. Got it. Square both of those integers and then find the difference of the squares. All right, so if I chose 39 and 40, square 39 gets some number, 40, square it, get some number, find the two squares, bingo. Which of the following could be the difference? Ooh, so I want to take those two squares and subtract them and get the difference. And the answer is either A, a difference of two could happen, maybe, I don't know, 64, 79, 96, 131. Which of those five choices could possibly be the difference of those two squares? That's the question. All right, I have to think my way through this. Um, well, it'd be nice since they've actually given us choices here to see if we can eliminate some of those possibilities and reduce our options down a fair bit. I'm wondering if there's a way if I can do that. That would be strategy number six, eliminate incorrect choices. Hmm, well, what can I do? Well, I'll tell you, I'm a very visual person. When I think square numbers, I literally think squares. For example, four squared really is 16 dots arranged in a square. That's why they're called square numbers. They really are geometric squares. So that's four squared. If I did five squared, so the next consecutive integer squared, I guess I'll make this dot, the picture five rows long, and I guess I need a fifth row as well. Oops, one, two, three, four, five. So there it is. There's five squared. Oh, this question said, take the two squares and their difference. I can actually see the difference while I've drawn on the board already. This is kind of, kind of cool. This is four squared right there. And this whole thing is 5 squared, so the difference is this, what's in this L-shaped part here. All right. Now, if it was 39 and 40, I guess I'll get its own little L-shape, or you know, 79 and 80, its own L-shape. But basically, I get these L-shapes for the difference. So which of these numbers, 2, 64, 79, 96, 131, could be the answer to one of these dots, in the number of dots in this L-shape? Hmm. Oh, it's symmetrical, sort of. Do you see there's going to be some dots along this leg, some dots along that leg, equal a number because it's square symmetrical, and an extra dot. I can see the number of dots is going to be the difference of two squares is some number doubled plus one more. It's going to be an odd number. Bingo. The difference of the two squares is going to be an odd number. So the answer can't be A, not 2, can't be B, 64, can't be D, 96. The answer is either, well, this is exciting, C, which is 79, or E, which is 131. Which one is that? Which one is it? It's one of those two. Since the question said the numbers have to be small, they have to add up to less than 100, I bet the answer can't be too big. So they've given me one small answer and a bigger answer. My gut tells me that's probably the answer to the question. Could it really be 79? Is that really the right answer? Am I, am I thinking correctly? So I'm going to leave this to you now. Which of these two answers correct? Is my intuition right? Could it actually be 79? Is 131 actually impossible? Or is my reasoning wrong? There's something else going on that 131 turns out to be the actual answer and there's some reason why we have to eliminate 79. This is actually now worth thinking about. This is, this is really cool. So do think about this. And when you've decided whether I, my intuition's right or not, compare your answer with my answer in the essay that goes with this video. This is really cool. It's a nice way to think about square numbers. That's good. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.